torque is generated as each light goes through the phase. Uh, the ideal variable of this torque can be calculated using the equation seen in figure 28, where the M matrix is going to be the rotational inertia associated with the mass variables of the system. The C matrix is the viscous damping associated with the damping coefficients. And then the N matrix is going to be the rotational stiffness, which directly pertains to the gravitational forces on the system. <coughs> So to model this, we use Simulink once again, where we input the foot trajectory as an input, specifically the X and the Y um, coordinates. And then through this, we can derive the translational velocity. Using the inverse kinematics that Miro talked about earlier, we can get the, the thigh and the, and the calf angles, which then convert to the rotational velocity and rotational acceleration. These are then output into a larger system which directly inputs them into some MATLAB sub-functions, calculating each cell of the matrices previously described in figure 28. Um, once it calculates each cell, it outputs it into a larger MATLAB script, which creates the matrices and then acts the matrix multiplication and addition, outputting the torque of the thigh and the torque of the calf. Again, these are ideals, so they can be used in a feed-forward control strategy to assist the controller in supplying enough voltage, having that insight into what the actual torque's gonna be for it, rather than letting the feedback error build up and then supply the voltage, so this will give you smoother actuations. Another part of the design process was monitoring the center of the mass throughout these motions. Uh, so in order to do this, the, uh, we used figure 30 equation for the center of mass. This is really important because it directly relates to the stability of the robot, which was one of the customer requirements in terms of safety. So we plotted the center of mass for each component of one leg, seen in figure 31. Each, specifically the thigh, the calf, and then the cylinders of the thigh and the calf plotted throughout the phase of one full motion. The figure 32 will show as it shifts, as the light moves forward, and then as it push phases goes back, it will go back to its original position. And this will be a video that will show <clears throat> during the motion of one leg, you can actually monitor that center of mass as it moves. Because the leg doesn't weigh too much, it's not offset by a great amount. And this is going to be consistent with the other legs as well, since we're only moving one leg at a time. So as the leg moves forward, you can see the center of the mass starting at the iPod and move into the triangle. So for uh, regarding the layout, uh, it was important, like Brett said, uh, to uh, maintain a good center of the mass. And so the batteries are uh, by far the heaviest part of the, each component. Um, so that was placed really close to the center. Uh, and then the controller and power distribution board sort of offset that. Um, in terms of the horizontal. And then uh, just for simplicity and, and being intuitive, um, each uh, valve is placed by its respective leg that it's controlling. Uh, and then all the wires are uh, fed into the center of the robot and then fed into the controller and power distribution board. And so regarding the electrical system, as I mentioned a little bit before, um, obviously 12 and 24 volts uh, requirement. Uh, here's uh, a pretty detailed layout of the system itself. Um, we have an Arduino uh, going towards a uh, kill switch, um, and then everything is, uh, the control scheme essentially is being controlled on the, the laptop, because um, we have a slave control system. And so uh, many things feed into the laptop, and then uh, 24 volts to the, to the valves, um, that's wired in series by using two 12 volt power distribution boards. Uh, so one of the other things we needed to do was improve the actuation of the legs. So like when talked about, it was smooth for a lot of it, but then on the, the steep ramp, there was a lot of overshoot. So we wanted to decrease that. So we did Ziegler and Nichols tuning methods on an approximated step response for that steep ramp. Uh, with Ziegler Nichols tuning, you start with the, we started with the gains at zero and we ramped up the proportional gain until we were near against stability, in which case we recorded that gain as well as the sampling, uh, the, the period of the response. So we plug those uh, values into the Ziegler-Nichols uh, gain equations, which you can see in the above table. And then below you can see what the results were for our Ziegler-Nichols gains. So those gains gave us a starting point, which you can see in figure 35. So from there, we did an iterative process where we modified those gains until we were uh, satisfied with the response. The, the end result uh, was figure 30, you can see in figure 36. So one of the, the main things we had to do was reduce the integral gain to reduce the overshoot, uh, increase the proportional gain to speed up the response and reduce the settling time, and then increase the derivative gain to increase the stability of the system. You can see that through that process, we went from 
40% overshoot for the uh, initial uh, Ziegler and Nichols tuned gains down to 10%, which met our uh, requirements of being between 5 and 10% overshoot. So then we uh, put those gains into the actual uh, response, and we had to slightly adjust them due to the fact that it's a steep ramp. And then uh, once we did that and the actuation was much improved, then we could focus more on the higher level control of the robot. So this is uh, another video of the animation here. So it's a complete robot. Um, first off, back leg uh, swings out to a uh, forward position, and then the whole robot goes through the swing phase. And so it swings, pushes off the ground, essentially moves the center mass of the robot and then uh, the front leg moves forward to reset it to its beginning position. And then the cycle can repeat. So this is essentially what you saw in the simulation, but uh, on the actual robot. So right now we're using relatively uh, low cycle speeds. Um, in the future work, this could be sped up for uh, a higher uh, walking speed. And then one thing to point out, the pneumatic tubing, uh, so the red tubing, that uh, goes to all the cap sides of the cylinders. So that's the, the pressure being controlled. And then the yellow tubing is a constant uh, 60 PSI. So push phase. And to be clear, this is the push phase. Um, to be clear, so the laptop will have to be connected uh, continuously to this to this robot. So right now we have all the the laptop and everything going to a, a scan. But if, if this were to walk, you'd have to follow it. And then this is just uh, the front legs going back into the, the beginning position. So future work, like I said, uh, speed up the whole cycle. So we're also implementing uh, various pauses. That's why you see you know, longer pauses between uh, different phases. So 